Well, today on WCR Nation, we're talking about customer types, how to sell to them, what are they looking for? We all have customers, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? I'm glad you're hanging out with us. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy the program. Uh, there's three years to catch up on. Not all of them are good, but some of them are. So catch back up on all the content. 30-minute uh, episodes come out every single stinking week. And they have for, like I said, three years. Um, if you are one of the cool kids or if you want to be one of the cool kids, that not only means you have the certified cool kid sticker, but it means that you order your supplies through me shameless plug what's up it is because of you that i get to live the lavish lifestyle that i do sitting in front of a piece of paneling but thank you thank you to everybody who does uh support me um support what we do it's so awesome that you guys order your supplies uh i'm a rep with windowcleaner.com but if you put your orders in through me i get credit and that's how i make my cheddar man uh, if you want to be one of the cool kids, give me a shout, 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone, so call me, text me. Most people text me. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Just be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I usually verify your address and put it in. If you want me to put your order in and it's not in your cart, that is awesome too. I can certainly do that for you. So give me a shout. Shameless plug over. By the way, just so you guys know, if I was MIA, I... I did come down with the COVID, um, but I'm back and uh, back on the men. So hopefully uh, you can hear a little bit in my voice, just some scratchiness. But other than that, uh, I'm back. So apologize for the slowness in this past week, but <clears throat> I'm back. Want to say a quick shout out to a few people. First off, Levi Smith. What up, man? Uh, and then the next three people here sent me Christmas presents. So I want to say thank you to them. First off, Craig Hensel, the man. The myth, the legend himself. David Petrie, what's up, man? Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, hooked me up with some super awesome coffee. Uh, and Aaron Langley and his wife. Thank you, guys. Uh, you have sent me some amazing stuff. I love it. My family loves it. Um, you guys really went all out this year. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. But today on Nation, we're talking about some customer types. Now, we did an episode, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple years ago on customer types, and it was a little bit more vague, but I really, really, really find interest in a customer type. Now, let me explain what I'm saying. If you have a customer, customer one and customer two, both of them, <clears throat> excuse me, need to be sold to separately. They need to be kind of explained your services different. If you have somebody who... Um, you know, uh, is a nitpicky person, they're going to have different questions than if they're the average Joe, right? There's different ways to talk to people and different ways to sell to them. And let me explain this in the first part, because a lot of people don't understand selling. They think that it's like high pressure sales. You're pu pushing them to do something they don't want to do. I'm a salesman. That's what I do. It's what I've done in my window cleaning business. It's what I do for windowcleaner.com. And the traits of a great salesperson is that all you're doing is finding out what somebody needs and letting them know what the best choices are, why they're the best choices, and letting them make the decision. That's how I do sales for window cleaning uh, supplies. Now people call and go, what's the best squeegee rubber? I say that there is no best squeegee rubber. Let's find out what you need, right? That people get upset, they want sometimes just an exact answer, but that's not really how sales works. I need to find out what you need in order to tell you what is the best option. If somebody says, you know, uh, I'm looking to do two stories on water fed, uh, that's the highest I'll ever go, uh, what pole? I'm not going to say the destroyer, being that that's the most expensive pole that's designed to go 90 feet. They don't need that, right? It's the same thing with window cleaning and pressure washing. You know the services you offer are the best. You know that people should be choosing you. I hope you're working on your USP. <clears throat> I hope that you have that. Unique selling point 
Um, hopefully you have that in the uh, kind of shadows and, and have been working on that, by the way. But you need to be able to tell them in their own language why they need to choose you. And I'll give you a quick example. If you've talked to John Lee with windowcleaner.com, John is from Tennessee. Buddy, he talks slow, man. He's a little bit slower when he talks. Everything kind of comes out slower. You know, that's how he is. That's how he communicates. <clears throat> if you talk to uh, Chris or Alex, they're from New Jersey. Everything they talk about is just quick. It's fast. Everything is they, they talk, they talk. Those two people cannot communicate well together without adjusting how they're communicating. They just can't. The, the, the two don't mix perfectly. If I need to talk to John and he was somebody who was asking questions and looking for products, I'm going to slow down how I talk. I'm going to match how he talks. It's that same concept when it comes to customers for window cleaning. And that's what we're talking about today. Customers for window cleaning. We're going to run into a bunch of them. By the way, if you haven't and you're watching on YouTube, give the video a thumbs up. That would be most epic. And comment down below. I want to know what customer types you know of. Which ones did I miss? Let me know down below. But the first one I want to start off with is the too busy. The too busy is somebody that you call and, uh, <clears throat> hey, I just real quick, I just, I, I got to uh, get an estimate real quick. Uh, I was wondering if I could just give you my address. You can get back to me. I got a ton to do today. I just one of my, everything that they do is in a panic, in a rush, and that's how they exist. They are the too busy, Right? So how you need to do is honor their decision to be too busy. <clears throat> and that is just a decision. Um, nobody's too busy to not take five minutes of a day to make a phone call, right? So you know they're too busy in their head. I know they're too busy in their head. But the way that they sell and the way that they will accept what you're saying is to also jump on that. Oh, oh absolutely. Hey, just, all I need is your address. I'll do all the legwork and I'll get you a call back here later right? That's how they want to be sold. To. That's how they want to be talked to. Now, I'm going to do it super fast and call them back within just a minute because I don't want to lose that opportunity. It's in their brain right the second, right? <clears throat> and I know unless they give me a specific time, I know that they're not too busy to talk to me. They're just too busy to waste time in their head. So I'm going to get that quote, get everything together and give them a call back. And I know they're busy, right? So when I call back, hey, I know you're busy. I just wanted to call. This is Jersey with XYZ. Uh, I just wanted to get you a price on the window. So inside, outside, track sales, frames, the whole kit and caboodle. I'm talking fast because they're busy. Hey, you you know I'm busy. You're talking fast. You're trying to get it all out. Hey, I'll, just so you know, it's all uh, 199 And the first available appointment is going to be Tuesday between 9 and 10 a.m. How does that work for you? That whole thing was so fast. They're like, yes, this guy knows that I'm busy. Oh, I'm so busy. Yeah, you know what? That works perfect. Uh, thank you for making this so stinking easy. We will see you then. Click. I spoke to them in their language. If I wanted to take time, if I wanted to try to upsell them right then and there, <clears throat> if I wanted to explain all the services and why we're so great, they don't have time for that. I'm then disrespecting their time, even though they're the ones that are making up the fact that they're too busy. And that's what we're talking about, kind of how to mend. That's the too busy. Uh, you get too busy uh, sometimes, but it's more you find they're too busy when you get to the job. Hey, you know what? I, I just I, Today is crazy. Just f make yourself at home. Just let me... When you're doing the work for them, absolutely. You know what? We'll be in and out of your hair uh, super, super fast. We don't need anything from you. Uh, just enjoy your day. Get all that uh, work done, right? That's how the too busy wants to proceed. Now, there's another one off of that. That's the too big. A too big customer is the one that you say, they call and say, hey, I need you to come out and give me an estimate. Oh, not a problem. I can actually do that right over the phone. Well, <laughs> You know, uh, you might be able to in a normal house, but uh, we we do live in a... We've, we've been blessed to have uh, quite a substantial house, and I just don't want you to miss bid. As soon as someone even alludes to them having such a big house that I just can't do my job over the phone like that. Oh, oh, absolutely. Hey, I really appreciate you bringing that up. I, I mean, I'm used to cookie cutter houses, a house like yours... Uh, I'd love to to take a look in real life, right? 
I'm going to show up to their house and do a bid. Now, when I tell people that I do all my bidding over the phone, um, if you're not doing that, you should be 100%. Don't tell me your customers don't let it. Uh, not in my area. No, I can't. Do- yes, you can. If you've been in business for any amount of time, you know what a house looks like. I can ask you a series of like five questions and I know exactly what your house looks like. I know your price. I don't even have to see a picture, but satellite imaging program online, you can get a better uh, idea of that. But I'm going to show up to the, the uh, two bigs house. And as soon as I get there, oh my gosh, yes. Uh, thank you so much for telling me. I, this is Your house is amazing. I, I'm not used to seeing stuff like this. And 99.9, I'd say probably 100% of the time that anybody's ever told me that their house is just too big. They're very proud of what they have, which is awesome. But it's not too big, right? Most of those houses, I've had houses where people, uh, oh, you can get me a quote over the phone? Yeah, definitely. Take a look. Okay, a couple quick questions for you. What's the square footage of your house? Uh, Our house comes in in just under 14,500 square feet. Um, Oh, okay, let me get the... And I pull it up and it ends up being a uh, an estate. There's two full houses on the property, right? People who have that kind of thing don't necessarily need to talk about it because they already have it. People who need to talk about it, they don't really have it, so they talk about it, right? But I'm going to play into that because I want people to also understand that I've realized they have a big house. They have a beautiful house. Wow. You know, I want them to understand they should be proud. This is huge. This is... This would be awesome for us to even be able to work on. I would love that option, right? People are very, very proud. I want to show them that I appreciate their house too. That's how you'd sell a big, a too big. Uh, One other thing on a too big is I always find that a too big is okay with you doing pictures. Just a question. We always look for beautiful houses like this to do some non-invasive pictures of our guys working uh, is that something we'd be able to do on this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Use it for your site. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the homepage if you need to, right? They're so proud of their house that they're now going to be able to tell somebody, hey, the window cleaner was there, said the house was so awesome he wanted to take pictures and use it for his advertising. Like That to them is talking their language. Now, I'm not going to pander somebody, right? I'm not going to, oh, yeah, your house is huge, huh? Wow, geez. Right? I'm not going to do that. Because that's not their language. Their language is their house is too big. I appreciate the fact that it's too big, right? Another guy or a girl um, is the the last guy charged person. We all know this one, right? The last guy charged, fill in the blank. Now, the big thing with the last guy charged is it's always way under what you did. Oh, your price is going to be $299. Oh, man, really? $299? The last guy charged me $112. Oh man! Oh dang! Uh, where did you give him a call? Did he do the same thing, same price this year? Oh, I can't get a hold of him. Oh uh, yeah, he probably just kind of maybe was doing a part time or or uh, wasn't doing it, or maybe maybe not charging the proper price. Kind of caught up to him in the insurance department. But I'm gonna let them know with certain terms of why we charge. Oh yeah, well, you know, as we try to be the lowest in the area, of course we can't be sometimes with our full uh, insurance policy, we carry a $2 million aggregate policy and all of our employees and techs are bonded uh, with that fully insured side of things. You know, our equipment's top notch. Our trucks are brand new. You know, we do pride ourselves in kind of being that top tier. So as much as I'd love to meet that price, the price that I gave you uh, is the lowest that we'd be able to do it for. But I can tell you this. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. We have a seven-day rain guarantee. And I guarantee you're going to love what we do. If the person still goes, ah, well, yeah, but uh, it's, it's twice what I wanted to spend. Oh, absolutely. Well, it never hurts to check right now. You know our prices. You know where we stand. I'd love to earn your business, but let me know. I'm not going to push the fact because if they want to go find somebody else or they want to find somebody or they want to, their real thing is not necessarily that the last guy charged because a lot of times it's not even that. It's something that they heard some guy doing. Oh, my, yeah, my, my cousin did my windows. He charged me 112 bucks or whatever, right? But what they're doing is, is they're trying to justify price. They had that price in their head, or even if they just made it up, they had a price in their head. You came in a little bit higher, and now they're bringing it up 
not as a um, I'm against buying it for that price, but a why is it that price? So having an explanation of why is really what ends that. I've said maybe two times in 15 years, somebody has been like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to check other people. Usually when I tell them everything, they go, okay, well, you know, you come in higher, but uh, I think yeah, I'm going to give you a shot and we'll see. Where oh, absolutely. Hey, I, I, I promise you're going to love things. If there's anything specific that you'd need or want us to pay close attention to, that's what we're here for. I want them to understand it's not about price. I want them to understand, hey, you know what? I'm not going to even drop my price. I'm not even going to come close to that because sometimes that's what they're looking for. But I am going to do the best job that I can. I know that you're going to be happy with what I am. And that's the big thing. I'm going to be happy spending that much more money. That's the last guy charged. The last guy charged, the downside of that is a lot of the times they are telling the truth. And you'll come in and be like, oh, uh, so our price right now is $379. That's for inside, outside tracks. Oh, gosh. I had it done two years ago for 99 bucks. Inside and outside? Yeah. Blech. Well, somebody made some beer money, right? Like <laughs> It's kind of sad when you find uh, other people's pricing, especially when they're that crazy low. But... You do what it is, and remember the big fact, especially if you're new, this is hard, but you're not going to land everybody, and you don't want to land everybody. If you land everybody, your prices are too low, and the other side of things is that there are some people who just do not want to hire you. They just won't hire you. They know they can do it. They don't even know what window cleaning, I don't know, the guy's going to be like 40, 50 bucks, I bet, and you come in at 299, and they're like, yeah, that's way far away from where my mind was already wrapped around. Uh, another one is the ask every question guy or girl. This one is great because what they're doing is they're asking for time. They want to be treated as in their dollar is worth more than other people's dollars. Now, again, sometimes people are like, yeah, I'm not going to cater to people like that. That's fine if that's your rule, but this is just how you communicate. This person's going to ask you, what are you using your water? Uh, can I ask you to use a towel like a cotton do you what? Do you, are you guys insured? You, you're bonded. You're you're this. You're that. Right? Those people are a little bit more worrisome. They want to make sure they're making the best decision. They want to put it all out there. They're gonna ask questions, but they're gonna see how you respond. If you take the time and over answer every one of their questions, which I like to do, it shows them like this guy not only knows what he's talking about, but he's taking the time to put me at ease. Right? People are like, oh, are you guys insured? One of their questions, instead of just saying, yep, oh yeah, absolutely, you know, we've been insured uh, since day one, uh, we carry a $2 million aggregate policy, it's a million per occurrence, uh, we've never had to use our insurance, but it's there as a good protection just in case anything ever does happen. That long answer shows them like, oh wow, okay, wow, okay, great, great, great. Uh, you guys, what, what kind of towels are you, you know? They just have those, and I'm going to answer those questions nice and long and make them feel comfortable. That is the ask every question person. The next one I really, really love. I don't care what it costs. Uh, I love this one and I hate this one at the same time because when somebody says, no, no, I don't need a quote, just do it. I don't like that because I can only assume in my dumb brain that when I give them the price, they're thinking in there, this guy's taking advantage of me. So I always say this line, I don't care what it costs, just get it done. Uh, you know, Joe up the street had you, he said he did a great work, I trust Joe. Oh great, hey, just so you know, we do still do a quick estimate, it only takes a second. Uh, let me ask you a couple of questions, that way we're just both on the same page and if something doesn't seem right to you as far as price being too low, let me know. I always say that that way so that people are on the other, oh, this guy's, you know, not not charging us enough. I don't, you know, like it's that type of thing. I'm going to put it out there. The person's still going to say yes because 99% of the time they already had an idea. They did talk to somebody. They already know your pricing, but putting it out there means there's no surprises. Surprises usually don't go well, right? If you give somebody a price lower than they thought, they're like, oh, well, that's nice, but they're not like oh, surprised. But if you go above what they thought, then they're surprised. Huh? Surprised it's that much. Uh, well, that always ends badly, right? So I always put it out there, but uh, the uh, don't care what it costs is always pretty nice. 
Um, the next one, and uh, don't take offense. If you do, shoot me an email. Tell me how offended you are. Jersey at windowcleaner.com. But it's the Desperate Housewife. Let me tell you the story about Desperate Housewives. I love the Desperate Housewife. That one is the one that while you're cleaning the window, they're having some kind of wine party at, uh, you know, uh, 1130 in the morning, right? I've had somebody literally, we showed up, it was the first job of the day, and by 9 o'clock, she'd already had uh, the bottle of wine out. I don't know if the whole bottle was gone yet, and she was watching some movie. She's in there crying with her blanket on, drinking wine at 9 in the morning. I love that one, but here's the thing. They don't necessarily care the who, the what, the where, the why. They don't care that side of it. They just care it's getting done and they're not doing it. And that is perfect, right? I don't conversate with them. Uh, They don't want a small talk. They're not there. They're not lonely. They just want their quietness. They're doing their thing. So what I'm going to do is I can give them their quote and everything. But when I start, it's quiet. I walk around. I do my thing and I don't talk. Uh, That is how a, a desperate housewife in my opinion, really loves it. And uh, they're also some of the best tippers. Just keep that in mind. Um, But uh, keep an eye out for those ones. Uh, They're definitely specific. Uh, Another one is the nitpicker. Now, the nitpicker is a tricky one because they're the ones that are going to follow you in every room. Now, on another note, there's somebody who you think might be a nitpicker. If you have, and I've seen this, Uh, I've had a guy who worked for me for four years, awesome worker, awesome worker. Uh, but he was a Mexican guy. And for some reason there was more people who were nitpickers only with him than anybody else that was on staff for some reason. And I don't know if it was that or what, or people just didn't, you know, trust him when he came in. I don't know. But that's one thing to watch people people following you just for the fact that they're, oh, yeah, do, uh, just so you know, uh, the other room, there's a smudge in the window. Oh, no, I haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, oh yeah, all right. Well, this one, are you you're still doing the sills in here? Yep, yep, I just haven't gotten to that yet. But uh, uh, how we do things is in a stage. It has to go in a certain order just so that we can be the most efficient we can. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to be in your way. No, no, follow, follow, have, uh, come along, you know, we'll show you what we're doing and tell you what, you know, those people are the ones that are making sure like, Hey, I'm paying good money for this, but I need to make sure that this is being done right. They're also a little worrisome. There's somebody in my house, right? So those people are going to follow you. Don't take offense. You could take offense deep down inside, but don't act like you've taken offense. Just accommodate. As soon as somebody like that is there, I'm going to be like, you know what? This is going to be one of those jobs that um, is going to, is going to, <laughs> I know this is going to, this is going to wear on me. This is going to wear me out, right? That's what a nitpicker is. So you can keep an eye out for the nitpicker. Uh, they're fine. They're okay to have following you. The big thing is if you're on a, having a nitpicker, let them know the things you're doing. It sounds dumb, but the thing is when they're, oh, hey, you know what, what I do, yeah, I always scrub the window like this first, uh, and then I go into squeegee, and then we go in with uh, steel wool, check for any smudges, that's why I'm doing this too, we're checking at different angles. I'm explaining and dumbing down everything, and the reason is, is that I want them to see, oh, this guy's doing, it. what about this? I already want to answer that question before they even had a chance to ask it. Overwhelming somebody with answers who is worrisome shows them that you A, know what you're doing, and B, you're not trying to pull the wool over their eyes. And that's really what they're they're there for. Remember, all these people, they all have a purpose that's deep down and deep-seated in them of why they act like that. So you're just trying to come back over the top and let them know that, hey, I see you, I know what's going on. Like, Make them feel comfortable. Comfort is what we're doing in any purchase of anything. The nitpicker's hard because the other thing is the nitpicker is going to catch stuff where you're like, oh, come on, like that's the littlest. But what I do is every time a nitpicker to, hey, just so you know, um, on the last window you did, there was like a smudge. Instead of you be like, there's no smudge. I was just, I go, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I can't believe I missed it. Could you, would you mind taking two seconds just to show me? 
oh, it's this big thing. Make it shown, make it known that you're bummed as they are that they found that, right? That's the nitpicker. Nitpicker's pretty hard. On the opposite side is the average Joe. The average Joe is my favorite customer by far. The average Joe is that person who um, is, they don't have old money, right? A lot of us in the service industry know what new and old money is. But somebody who's got new money, but they're not rich. What they are is comfortable. And when they're comfortable, not only are they in a house, excuse me, like a cookie cutter style 2,500 square foot house in a newer subdivision, right? They have some leased cars that are, you know, nice, but not fancy, right? Those type of people are happy for everything they have. Things are good. Those are the type. That's the average Joe. The person who's got enough and says, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have the windows clean. I just don't want to do it. Why not treat myself? Am I right? Maybe they cut their own lawn, right? Maybe they, you know, take pride in everything that they have, but it's not fancy per se. <clears throat> I love them. I love the average Joe. And the reason is, is they're the most appreciative people that you can do work for. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know what your favorite customer is down below just so I know. Um, but an average Joe is my favorite. The favorite, because they're the ones that are happy for what they have. So when you tell them the price, they're not like, oh, I can't pay that. They're like, you know what? I'm treating myself. I'm, I've I got in this point. Yeah, absolutely. They're the ones that tip you. They're the ones that don't treat you like help, which, by the way, is the most annoying thing ever when they're, hey, uh, yeah, I'm bringing groceries in. Would you mind uh, giving me a hand? Yeah, I'm not in the middle of something. Like, you didn't, you don't own me. You just are hiring me to do a certain job, right? Of course, I'm going to help them still, but it still can irk me. But the average Joe's is happy. The average Joe's is happy to have that. Plus, the house, I can charge a great price on it. It's going to be nice and fast. It's going to be newer, great style of windows. They may be cookie cutter. They're not going to be fancy windows, but they're going to be maybe casement crankouts or a double hung with the millions on the inside. They're not having stuff inside that I'm scared to walk around, right? They're more than likely not going to have a white wool burma carpet in the sitting room. Uh, it always just brings out the colors in the piano. They're not that. They're just happy for what they have. I love them. I feel a little bit more connected to when you get done. They're like, oh my God, you guys, this is so nice. You guys did such a good job. Here's some extra money. You know, do you guys want a soda? Can I get you a soda? Uh, we just made some cookies. You guys would take some cookies with you. They're the people who are the most down to earth. They're the people who can connect the most. They're also working people. They understand working people. When you get in these fancy houses, I am more not intimidated, but already having a sour. If I'm doing a big mansion, you know, a big, like a two day house or something, I'm already like, oh, I hope they're not there. I hope it's just they're, uh, they're made. Because when they're there, it's this big thing. And usually it's this, oh, girls, do you know who I am? Look at the uh, average Joe is going to be just happy that you made their day. Average Joe's my favorite. Tell me down below if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, go to YouTube, search WCR Nation, find this episode and comment. Tell me what your favorite one is. Let's blow up the comment sections because why not? Um, <clears throat> under that, the worst one that you could ever have is the never happy. Now, the never happy, we've had those. No matter what you do, how awesome you do it, they are never happy. I had somebody uh, who yelled at one of my guys <clears throat> because we take our shoes off. Now, one of the things I tell people is you wear newer socks always. This guy, the socks were pristine, took his shoes off, <clears throat> excuse me, and she's complaining. She goes, I just don't know why you'd take your shoes off in my home. He's like, oh, did I have shoe covers. Did you want me to go put the shoe covers on? No, no, no. You're not walking through the house like a shoe cover. That's for like painters. He's like, oh, okay. Uh, did you just want me to keep my shoes on then? She said, like, no, of course not. You're going to dirty the carpet. Okay, well, those are the three options. You hate all three options. You're never happy, right? Or somebody, when you're all said and done, uh, you do everything. You've told them the price. You did everything. Well, you know. 
the windows are fine, right? You know, I think you guys could have paid a little bit more attention to the sills, but, um, you know, price-wise, I do think you guys are a little high, right? But you knew that price going into it. If you're not happy with a part of our service, we can go back and do No, 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 no. I don't want you to do the windows again. You're done. Just saying next time, maybe spend a little bit more. Like, those are the people who are just never happy, right? And in service, they're the ones that drain you the ins because in the inside you're like, oh my god, this. <sighs> but that is what comes with the 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 world. The way to communicate to a never happy is to s oversell them in the quality. And if we miss something, please, please let me know. I know you're not going to want to tell me. I know that it's probably in your nature to keep it to yourself. I know that you don't want to bother us with it, but please tell us if there's anything. We have 100% satisfaction guarantee. I want to make sure that you are absolutely happy with everything. I wish you could be happier on the price, but um, unfortunately, you know, uh, we're not always the lowest where we try to be. Putting that out there, I'm telling them subliminally, don't call me. Because I know they're going to call. Or in their brain, they're like, I should just tell them. I should tell them that they didn't do these sills good enough, even though they're good enough. Right? But I'm telling them, please, I know you don't want to, but but do. They're like, well, I'm not going to bug the guy about it. That's the never happy. The never happies, uh, the most amount of customers I've ever fired were never happies. They're the people who I've gotten to the very end, and the stuff that they're talking about just doesn't make sense to the point where I say, you know what? Mrs. Jones... Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm going to refund all your money for you. <clears throat> and I just don't think that we're the right company for you. I want you to find somebody that does the work that you're looking for. And unfortunately, we just missed the ball on that one. But I do appreciate you letting me get you, you know, the opportunity to try to help. Uh, and I do appreciate that. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and give you all your money back. And people go, well, I wouldn't do that. I keep the money and never do that. Well, here's the thing. That particular person's then, no, no, just, I don't want my money back. I just was bringing, you know, like they may come back that way. But the other side is, is that that person, when everything's said and done, will still refer you to other people. They still talk about you because you still left them happy, even though they're never happy. So those are them. Uh, please do let me know down in the comments down below. I want to say one other thing too. I did announce on here uh, that uh, I was a new owner of the American Window Cleaner magazine. <clears throat> if you have not gotten your subscription to that yet, do it. It is absolutely uh, an awesome magazine. I'm super excited for what's coming down the pipeline. Things have changed. Get your copies uh, ASAP. Get a subscription. It's a monthly magazine. It's absolutely epic. Steve-O's on the cover of the first issue uh, coming out here in January. Um, so please do do that. Uh, the price goes up uh, beginning of next year also, so why not get in on that? I hope you guys are having a great holiday. Either way, if you need supplies, do call me, text me, make my day. My number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. Call me. Keep me in there. Let me put every order in you ever need because that would be uh, uh, absolutely awesome. Um, but uh, do that. I really, really appreciate it. Um, until next time, go out there, figure out all the customer types and how to sell them. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.